Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the works of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. With agricultural diversity being a top priority of Guyana, the country has exported close to $2 billion in non-traditional commodities in 2023. Some of these non-traditional commodities include fruits, vegetables, spices and grain crops, among others. Export for January to November 2023. Guyana's exported of non-traditional agriculture commodities totaling 8,926 metric tons, value at 1,862 million, yes, 8.8 .8 million U.S. dollars. Guyana is on target to produce all of its livestock feed by 2025 while reducing its dependency on imports. Proving this, thousands of acres of corn and soya have been produced in 2023. We have seen an almost 10,000 acres of corn and soya beans being produced in 2023, with production for 26,000 acres by the end of 2024 and 30,000 acres by the end of 2025. What we want to do, this will take us to self-sufficiency in 2025 for us to produce all the feed, the livestock feed for our country's need. Needs. President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali launched the Agriculture Innovation and Entrepreneurship Program, AIEP, back in January 2022, geared towards attracting youths to the agricultural sector. As of December 2023, $25.4 million has been earned from the fifth to four shade houses. You know for a fact that we have, this was a very innovative project where we have formed a company and we have made these young people shareholders. To date, we, we have seen an uh, uh, earnings of uh, over $25 million from this project. These um, young people will receive div div dividends from this project as shareholders. So these are encouragement for young people to get involved in the agriculture sector. The fisheries and aquaculture subsector is a significant source of jobs, income and nourishment for many Guyanese. It has shown exponential growth, achieving a production of 815,496 kilograms from January to November 2023, earning Guyana $1.3 billion. We are seeing now more and more demands for these species of shrimp and we are seeing increased production and this is a tremendous achievement for us in the brackish water shrimp industry. I am hoping that when the project would have completed in another six months that we can increase production close to about over 120,000 kilograms monthly with the projects that are going on in that part of the country, Region 6. While there has been major works done and undergoing on a plethora of roads and bridges across the country, heavy focus is also placed on river transport. This means that a number of sell-ins had to be upgraded to offset the growing number of passengers and vehicles. Guyanese can expect the construction on some of these major pieces of infrastructure to be completed in the third quarter of 2024. We have four major multi-million dollar projects ongoing in terms of the development of our stellings. The Kingston Goods Wharf, which is 35% completed. The Port Kaituma Stelling, which is 77% completed. The Comarca Stelling, which is 80% completed. And Marijuana Stelling, which is 34% completed. All of these stellings should be completed no later than the third quarter of 2024. By the first quarter of 2024, construction will start on a massive building to consolidate government ministries and agencies. This is a major project. You would have heard us discuss this at Parliament and provisions have been made. We have actually moved the location to give us a better deal and a better service. Further, passenger movement at the Chetty Jagan International Airport, CJIA, continues to increase as the airport processed 729,680 passengers for 2023. This represents an increase of 11% compared to last year's numbers. So we are seeing growth and we are looking forward for the million mark very soon. And that will come as a result of us boosting 
our tourism potential and us continuing to use Guyana as a hub to connect the Caribbean and South America. Government will be monitoring the availability of sand and aggregates to ensure there are no delays in the construction of the new high-rise bridge across the Damarara River. This bridge, apart from its transformational nature, is also tied into a time-bound, time-specific contract arrangement. And that means that we have to be able to meet significant milestones to ensure that we are keeping the progress going. They have completed, based upon the reports that I have received, 100% of the temporary bridge. And they are now putting in the platforms that are required to do the work. The Ministry of Labor's Board of Industrial Training, BIT, has trained 3,335 persons from across the country in 50 occupational areas from the $488 million allocated in 2023. Of that total, we trained 154 persons with disabilities uh, via BIT program um, in conjunction with the disability one of the disability organizations. Um, an important issue. Um, also, presently we are engaged with the Basic Need Trust Fund training um, 312 persons in Region 5, Region 6 area, every duty equipment. Um, operator program. The ministry has been aggressive in its defense for workers' rights so much that through valiant representation, they have been able to recover $69 million for employees in 2023. The ministry has also managed to resolve a mammoth 85% of these complaints. The other 15% will be resolved in uh, the first quarter of 2024. The government of Guyana, through its Ministry of Housing and Water, has ensured over 35,000 citizens countrywide receive first-time access to potable water within three years by spending $26 billion. Access to potable water has, uh, sorry, currently stands at 97.3%, that's national. Over the last three years, we more than 35,000 residents nationwide received first-time access to portable water. The road to achieving 50,000 house lots has become smoother with the mammoth 9,600 lots being allocated by the Central Housing and Planning Authority in 2023. It sets a clear path towards accomplishing this manifesto promise made during the hustings. Region 4, by breakdown, was 7,128. Majority of those are on the east coast of Demerara. Region 3, 1,079. Region 5, 125. Region 6, 192. Those are that this year figure. For Region 3, in terms of allocations of what is happening, we, ha we will have uh, an increased focus in Region 3 for housing program. Currently, we have the Edinburgh, Lenora area that a number of persons will be constructing houses and expected to come on stream would be the Wales development uh, area. That is going through its final stages in terms of design and that will be part of the Region 3 uh, program for housing for us. That's probably where the new area for Region 3 will come. Birthed from a newfound love for golfing during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Tamari Sands Golf Course and Country Club rises as a symbol of Guyana's thriving investment climate. Minister of Culture, Youth and Sport Charles Ramson Jr. hailed the project as a welcoming environment for diaspora investments. You can't be a, a tourism destination if you don't have a really good golf product. You don't have a good golf product. Um, and if, if we're going to be serious, uh, just so that this is in alignment 
with our overall vision for the country. President Ali's overall vision for the country, one of, one of it is to be a premier destination for world-class events. We have started to do that. You know that with CPL and today, this year we're going to be hosting World Cup uh, cricket, T20 uh, World Cup uh, cricket. And we've started to do that with many, many different types of events, with athletics, etc. This will help to fortify amongst the, the variety that would help in developing the country. This has brought us to the end of this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related stories, do log on to our website at dpi.gov.gy and our social media platforms as well. Goodbye.